Hello, everybody. Um, it is 5.30 and I'm calling this meeting to order. First, a reminder that meetings of the select board are meetings conducted in public. They are not meetings of the public. Nonetheless, members of the public shall be afforded reasonable opportunities to express opinions about matters conducted by the select board so long as order is maintained. The rules for public comment are at the conclusion of the select board discussion on an agenda item, but before any action is taken, there may be 10 minutes afforded to public comment. Comments made by the public must be addressed to the chair, to the select board as a whole, and not to any individual members of the select board or members of the public. Members of the public must be acknowledged by the chair before speaking. If a member of the public has already spoken on a topic, they should not be recognized again until others have first been given the opportunity to comment. Order and decorum shall be maintained throughout the meeting. Personal, impertinent, threatening, or profane remarks will not be tolerated. For those who are participating <coughs> via Zoom, please note that chat is not an appropriate avenue for public comment. All public comments must be made verbally when acknowledged by the chair. Please silence all cell phones and a reminder to all that this meeting is being recorded and may appear on the internet. So are there any adjustments to the order of the agenda? I have none. Does anybody else have any? I'd like to add some comments on the fire department particularly about the role of the Firefighters Association. Um, under what? Under, under Select Board Unfinished Business Fire Department Reports. Um, all right. uh, what did you say specifically? I'm sorry, um, I didn't catch all the, that. Just the role of the Firefighters Association in this process. Okay. Um, uh, does anybody else have any adjustments? Okay. No. Uh, uh, Eric, is there right? Yeah. He's lost. Him. No, nothing. Okay. All right. Moving on to the approval of minutes, of, uh, May first, twenty twenty-four. Can I hear a motion? Move to. I'll make a motion to approve the minutes of May first, twenty twenty-four. I'll second. All right. <clears throat> then moved and seconded to approve the minutes of May first, twenty twenty-four. Do we have any changes? Okay. Eric, any changes? Nope. Uh, Peg is shaking her head. Okay. Um, hearing none, uh, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Uh, you two are good? Okay. Yep. All right. Um, so the next piece is the warrants to the treasurer. Can I hear a motion? I'll make a motion to approve and execute the warrants to the treasurer on completion of review. Second. Second. It's been moved and seconded to approve and execute the warrants to the treasurer, treasurer upon completion of review. Karen? Payroll was warranted May 17, 2024 in the amount of $21,200. Um, this, why is this in a slightly different format? I can't answer that question. <laughs> no, probably <laughs> because, uh, so Brian Harlow has two um, payroll checks. Mm. One's his vacation, one's regular time. Oh, okay. And then Jason Newton, same thing there. Um, it's just the way. It just kind of yeah. panned out that way. Okay. I know. It just, I don't right. know why it does that, but. So because it's Nimmer. That's why. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, anybody have any questions on the payroll? Moving on to accounts payable. <coughs> accounts payable dated May 4th through May 17, 2024, in the amount of $55,400. $84.56. A nice low warrant, <laughs> which I like. <clears throat> um, okay. I'm trying to think. Yeah, you know, so you had the health care, um, it went down a little bit um, with Jason leaving. And Simon Operation is the other big for 11268 but that's a monthly contract. Okay. Um, Eric or Peg, do you have any questions on the warrants? No. Okay. Any 
anybody have anything? All right, hearing none, all in favor? Uh, Aye. Aye. Okay. Um, good. Moving on to public comments on items not on the agenda. Does anybody on the select board have any comments? Any, uh, Eric or Peg, do you have anything? No. Okay. Uh, are there comments online on items not on the agenda? Any comments in the room? Did you have something? Okay. So there is a card. Oh, that's right. I knew there was something. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't know where to put that. That's, so. um, yeah. So, um, so uh, back in, oh geez, uh, April or so, um, we expended the uh, ARPA money. Um, and one of the places that received the, some of the ARPA money um, was uh, the pumpkin patch. And so they wrote us a very nice thank you card um, and signed it. Um, and wrote um, a little letter, which I'll read now. It says, Dear Select Board members, Karen, and all of the hardworking folks at Town Hall, we can't thank you enough for granting us the award for ARPA funding to help keep the Putney Place and the Pumpkin Patch expanding and thriving. I know that this process was incredibly difficult and time consuming, with many challenges along the way. However, you took the time to learn about our organization and to share in our vision for the future of Putney. Understanding just how important child care is as, part, is as part of our community. We look forward to continuing our mission of serving the youth and families of our town, and this award will help us to do so. So that was nice. Um, do you want to see it? You can see it later? later. See it later. Um, so thank you for that. Um, so back to the public, um, are there any comments in the room? Okay, moving on to a uh, town manager's report. <clears throat> so I tried to put aside some other work other than the fire department. <laughs> so highway department, road superintendent, we received four applications. Um, so starting next week, I will be contacting people, going through an interview process. Um, I may have a third person in the room with me. So um, I will decide whether or not I'll be a select board member or somebody in my office. Okay. Uh, I am developing a um, process of questions, okay. and um, we're gonna. I'm gonna rate that, rate the applications. So I'm hoping by the 29th of May that we will have someone to bring to the board as a recommendation. Okay. Um, so paving for River Road South was delayed until the last week of May. Next stage has sent a request for 10 concerts at Cooper's Field um, because we just closed on that. Okay. Um, so I do have their schedule. Um, I did reach out to the men's softball league. Mm -hmm. um, I do know they have a tournament Labor Day weekend up there. So we're trying to, this first year is going to be trial and error, but um, we are putting signs up there, you know use of the field, contact town putty. Because they usually set up right in the softball field. Correct. Right? Yeah. Correct. And I do, um, I did request a quote for mowing Cooper's field. Okay. Now that we're adding another piece of property. <coughs> um, I'd like to get one or two more, but I'm, I'm not putting it out there. I'm just going to solicit. But I know we're going to have to mow that soon. Um, that doesn't fall under our current contract? No, it does not. I guess it wouldn't, right? No. Okay. No. Um, I will be up at JP for the City Managers Association Conference tomorrow and Friday. Um, and then on the 21st, I will be attending this Southern Vermont Economic Economy Summit at Mount Snow, which is an all-day um, event. I also want to just acknowledge that Justin St. Martin, Kayla Patterson, and Devin McHale, um, who served on the Putney Fire Department, graduated on Saturday from Landmark. Um, we did purchase um, plaques 
And because the program was already set at Landmark, Landmark handed them out at graduation. So um, <coughs> I wish we could have done it normally, mm -hmm. but um, I also understand that there was a graduation party down at the Putney Fire Station on Saturday, which I was not aware of, as I would have held on to them and presented them then at 3 o'clock on Saturday. Oh, well. So, um, that was unfortunate, but it's... At least they got them. Mm -hmm. Yes, they do have them. Um, and I'm hoping for the fall graduation that we can be a part of the program. Okay. So, um, I also want to congratulate and recognize um, Richard Rory Dubs, he just um, completed his certification um, for fire and emergency services <coughs> instructor one, NFPA 1041 2020. So this was a class of 40 hours. So he is now certified. So I just want to say congratulations, Rory, and thank you. That's great. Yes. Congratulations. That's a, that's a that's big a lot, achievement. That's a lot of work too, yeah. Yes. Yeah. And that's all I have. Yeah. Okay. Is there comments on the select board about the town manager's report? Hey, do you have anything? Eric? No. Okay. Um, any comments uh, from the public online about the town manager's report? Any comments in the room? Okay, moving on to boards, committees, and commissions. Uh, actions, discussion, and action. And the first one is the Great Hydro Licensing Letter, which is Ann. <coughs> I'm Ann Carey of the Conservation Commission, and the letter before you now is only slightly changed from the one that we reviewed before. Mm -hmm. um, there are a couple minor changes. We're continuing to ask for funds, although this is FERC will probably not do that. Pro they'll probably just put forward recreational plans for the whole um, stretch that's being evaluated now. Uh, and uh, But we were advised that we could go ahead and, and mention having funds for this just to give a heads up to Great River Hydro that that's the direction we're going in. Okay. Um, but the different projects that were mentioned are still pretty much the same. Recreational river access, riparian area contributions to recreation, uh, wildlife habitat, erosion control, and monitoring of the operational change to go back to more run of the river and more natural flow mm -hmm. for the water releases. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's about it. Uh, the Planning Commission also reviewed this and, you know, added some things which were good. And this is where we ended up and we're recommending that it be approved in this form. Okay. Is any, what is the select board? Any questions, concerns? I, I think it's a great letter. I think a lot of work went into it. And I, Real hopeful that they'll be impressed. Yeah. <laughs> um, and I think we ought to sign off on it. Okay. Any other comments on the select board? Eric? No, I think it's good. Okay, Peg? You're good? <clears throat> any, any comments online about the FERC relicensing uh, letter? Uh, can I hear a motion to uh, approve the. Oh, oh, yeah, 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 so, the I'm sorry. Comments in the room? I'm sorry. I, go ahead. Uh, Sue Coakley, yeah. uh, Chair of the Planning Commission. I just want to thank uh, Anne and the Conservation Commission for their work to put this letter together. It was a fair amount of effort, not just to write the letter, but to figure out what to say and how to participate effectively in this process. And I think it's very professional. I work, I've worked many years in this field, and I thought what they put on the table was very appropriate. And I hope that we are able to get the redress, as I call it, uh, for the damming of the river uh, and 
just thanks for your effort and look forward to see what happens. And, and, like, and I also supports. have to thank Kathy Urfer who sent me yes. a lot of good suggestions. That's right. Yes, there's a team effort there. She's very, yeah, she's very helpful. Yeah. Yeah. Great. Okay, are there, are there comments in the room? Any comments online? Okay, can I hear a motion to approve um, the FERC relicensing letter um, with myself as a signatory and Karen as a signatory? So, second. Okay, uh, it's been moved and seconded to approve the um, FERC relicensing yes. letter with myself as a signatory and Karen as a signatory. Um, yes. It's also if you talk to the. Parent. I don't know that I need to. I mean, you guys have already approved the letter, so I don't okay, know. got it. Uh, we could add everybody, but. Um. I just want to make sure we have the right letter. It's getting signed. Oh, okay, yes. Because when you mention a couple changes, I'm like, was that I think this is the this no, is no, the no. one that <coughs> this is the one it. Uh, uh, I think you change. I think you change well, this change slightly. Was. It says yeah. rather than six uh, miles or seven miles, it just says more than six frontage miles. It's a few, and as far as the farm land, it's two and a half miles along the river, our farm. Okay. That's really the signatory page. page is also like, it's like, it's separate page, so. Okay. Yeah, it is a separate Good. It, that's how it is. Perfect. Yeah. Perfect. So I think we're good. All right. Okay. Um, where was I? Signing it. Signing it. Yes. We didn't yeah. vote on it yet. Yeah. Yeah. We haven't voted on it. All in favor. Still. Okay, so are, here, are there any comments in the room? Any comments online? Okay. Hearing none, all in favor? Okay. Uh, any opposed? Wow. Um, Eric, did I get you? Uh, is Eric still there? I don't see him anymore. Okay, well, mm -hmm. we have enough to, to pass it. All right. Um, okay, moving on to the Planning Commission status report. Sue? I brought my pen for co signing. <laughs> okay, good evening, Sue Copley, Chair of the Planning Commission. Uh, this is my monthly report to the select board, as I've been doing since I've had this role. Um, I have copies, printed copies, if you need them, select board members. We have them. Uh, have them in our packet. packet. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. There are copies here for members of the public, if you want to pass them around. There are them. There's, I think, nine more right there. Um, I just want to note at the top of my um, comments, that back in February, we had talked about, before Fletcher, you were on the select board, that we would use this meeting to talk about the Putney Landing walkway uh, yeah, next steps. I just want to acknowledge that we will do that another time. Um, uh, what I am doing this evening is just bringing it back up, so I'll get on the agenda. I want The public was very interested in this topic, and I think that the date that we talk about next steps would be good for people to know that we're doing it. Mm -hmm. I did include in my report a copy of the Planning Commission's recommendations back in February when we held the final hearing that reflected the public comments and a way forward. Uh, and I will say that I have had a chance to talk with VTrans staff about next funding opportunities <coughs> and ways forward and next steps. So when we can schedule this topic I would be happy to bring that conversation and, and recommend to, recommendations to you. Um, so I, I don't have it in my report tonight. It was originally going to be addressing that, but we'll put it off to another date. Okay. I hope it doesn't go beyond June, because if we're going to apply for funding, we need time to prepare for that. Let's 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 um, let's aim for next the next meeting. Okay. Um, hope that we have enough bandwidth to tackle it. Yes, yeah, I understand. So I think it's good for uh, those who are interested and who attended the walk, the walk, the neighborhood walk, and who provided comments online, I hope they would know that, mm -hmm. that it's going to be then. So great. So I just wanted to bring that before I just went over the few things otherwise for the Planning Commission. So um, the Planning Commission in the past month uh, met four times, uh, well, since the beginning of April. 
uh, twice this month, twice in April. A focus has been kicking off um, implementation of town plan recommendations. One is to uh, undertake the housing needs assessment action plan, and the other one is modernization of our bylaws to reflect current uh, the town plan and new laws and to make them more efficient. We held first meetings uh, of our advisory committee meeting, uh, advisory committees. I think it got off to a very good start. We received feedback on an RFP that will be going out on Monday for consulting services, one for each, one for the bylaw modernization, one for the housing needs assessment and action plan. We are encouraging bidders to consider uh, working on both in a coordinated way or partnership way. So that will be going out. Um, you have a list in your report of the members of each of the committee. Peg asked for that at the last meeting, so I did provide that as part of it. And um, we are operating uh, in accordance with open meeting law because we do have a quorum of commissioners at each meeting. So they're noticed. Uh, we are posting minutes. I'm a little bit late in getting the recent ones out, but, but we will be doing that on a regular process. So. Um, that is moving along and we expect that the housing needs assessment project can begin with a consultant in July and we will probably begin the bylaw modernization either August or September, lagging that a little bit. Um, so that was the first part. Um, next is the town hall renovation, the town plan, uh, town, I mean I as planning commissioner continue to assist the town hall renovation project. Um, uh, after the hearing in April, I did assist the town to submit a grant, a Vermont Community Development Planning Grant um, uh, for $60,000. Um, and that uh, will be considered at a June 6th meeting of the Community Development Review Board. Um, and uh, that is still uh, in the running. There is some thought about how to match that to an implementation grant or an access modification grant. So we're thinking about that. Um, we also, last month, um, uh, through the Wyndham Regional Commission, requested $10,000 for project management for the town hall project, particularly for the ADA uh, measures. We are awaiting uh, word and confirmation of that. So that's what I have on town hall renovation. Um, next, uh, very recently, um, the, plan the planning commission was served, um, in, uh, was notified by Norwich Solar, uh, which is planning a fairly large solar uh, array, 500 kW, half a megawatt, uh, in Putney. Uh, they do have a smaller installation in Dummerston, um, but it is on Putney paper mill land, or at least what was Putney paper mill land, two acres of which um, is a capped paper waste landfill. Um, it's not unusual for solar arrays to be at landfills. In fact, that's often a common place to put them. But it is a 20-acre site, and it's a very large array. Um, it is um, going to the Public Utility Commission, as is required uh, for approval. The, um, this is a new topic for me, so I'm learned, this just came up as of Friday. So I'm still learning about it. Um, what Norwich Solar will be asking uh, the Planning Commission to do is to designate the area, and I'm not entirely sure what the area is yet, I haven't seen a plot plan, as preferred location mm -hmm. for such an application. And they've asked for an audience with the Planning Commission to present that. So um, I was just notified earlier today that they are making that notice to the Public Utility Commission. I haven't been served it yet so I haven't reviewed it, but that's coming, and it's a 45-day process, mm -hmm. to my knowledge. I need to find out the Public Utility Commission regulations and understand the context and the, the proposal. So it's, at this point, it's a heads up. I couldn't answer very many questions other than we will consider <coughs> it, look into it, and do what's appropriate and keep you all informed. Okay. Um, you already heard about the FERC uh, hydro dam relicensing request, so that was considered at the last Planning Commission meeting. Um, on economic development, we continue to be concerned about what happens uh, post Putney paper mill and the overall economic vitality <coughs> of downtown. We have continued to be in discussion with Discover Putney and have strongly encouraged them 
to hold some kind of meeting or summit to talk about this and to invite uh, the uh, chair of the BDCC, uh, Adam Grinwald and uh, Karen Astley and, and maybe others, to just talk about the status, what is known today, what are the resources available to help uh, businesses now who are suffering from the impacts of fewer numbers of people coming to Putney, but also long term, what do we do with the property and how does this help the town? So it's, it's something we're concerned about. It's a little early to take action, but um, we're encouraging some kind of event to be in June, and I will keep you informed uh, as we'll discover Putney as plans come together for that. Um, and uh, finally, I will conclude that saying we're still looking for new planning commission members, two of them. I have talked to a couple of people. I have not yet ascertained anybody who has expressed clear interest to serve, uh, but we are looking uh, for that, and uh, wanted to, I will continue to bring that to your attention and to the public's attention. We do have information on the Planning Commission uh, webpage about with an FAQ description of the work that we do, our agenda, and so forth, and the, excuse me, and the application process that the, that the select board has uh, for those who would be interested in doing that. That is my report for this month. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Uh, Sarah? Uh, sorry. Uh, and that's, a, that's what I just <laughs> That was a name. It was part of your high school. school. <laughs> that was my name. Um, yeah, I have one question uh, about the closing of the paper bill, just to pass on. We would like to be involved in some of those discussions. Our main concern is the pipe which runs from the paper mill to the Connecticut River mm -hmm. so that there can be a discharge of effluvia yeah. uh, into the Connecticut River which is then diluted by the massive amount of water in the Connecticut River mm -hmm. and passes standards. This is grandfathered, it's, it would never be allowed today. Uh, we're just concerned that that be shut down now since no one's at the plant. Just mm -hmm. We want that whole system taken care of in terms of just shutting it down and if there's plant isn't sold to another paper company which needs all of these prior agreements in place to function we would like to see it uh, permanently mm -hmm. discontinued and followed up on and I know that this is being handled by the state now I was but gonna say, yeah. just to put that in the ballpark is something we're really concerned about yeah um. Yeah, that's, that pipe is quite smelly at that at that juncture. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, I, I, it's like like you said. I think that's more of a state um, concern. I mean, it's our concern, but they handle it. Yeah. Um, but I agree with you that they should either cap it or take it out entirely. Um, Karen. So I'm going to have a teleconference next week with Adam Grinnell mm -hmm. and Rob Barron. And Are they with the paper company? Rob is. Um, Adam Grinnell is with Bradbrook Development Credit Corporation. Okay. So he's working with Soundview. Oh, okay. Okay. So I will ask the question um, to Adam. Mm -hmm. Because it, it goes down river. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it does. <laughs> down there. Yep. It has for long time yeah um, but I will um, feel that out so I can That'd find out exciting. okay okay are there other select board comments on the um, planning commission report <coughs> any comments online on Sue's report oh sorry Peg or Peg you're shaking your head is Eric back with us he is uh, Eric did you have any questions no nope. okay um, members of the public online, any questions or comments? Uh, anybody in the room? Okay, well, um, thank you once again for all of your work. And um, if anybody wants to be on the Planning Commission or knows of somebody who would be a good fit for the Planning Commission, um, I've, I was on it for a bit. Um, it's fascinating. Um, you get into all sorts of different um, regulations and well, you might not find them fascinating, but I do. Um, <laughs> uh, and it's also a good 
it's a good um, way to interact with the town plan and um, um, and shape the, the future of the town. So it's also a really good way to get into um, town government if you're so inclined. Um, so, but anyway, uh, they are looking for two members, and um, it is a very critical commission. So, hopefully, we can find some people soon. Um, all right, moving on to select board new business. The first one is the grand list extension request from the listers. Do we have a lister online? We do not. Okay. Um, so, I'm assuming that we're getting this because the um, because of the crime of your appraisal. Yes. And just we want to be safe. Yeah. And request the extension. Um, right now they're still collecting a little bit of data, but they're going to be wrapping up soon. But June first is usually, or July first is the last deadline. Well, July first would be pretty late, wouldn't it? Yeah. Because <laughs> that's our new fiscal year. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Okay. So, so it's just a safety precaution, just in case. Okay. Gives us a small extension um, for 30 days. Okay, and it looks like my signature is required on this. Okay, so that is correct. Um, can I hear a motion to um, approve the grand list extension request? Uh, so moved and to authorize the chair to sign. Thank you. And second. It's been moved and seconded to um, authorize the grand list extension request and um, to authorize myself to sign it. Um, are there comments from on the board about this? Peg, do you have anything? Eric? No. Okay, anybody in the online have any comments or questions? This is an extension to lodge the abstract grand list. Uh, is there any comments in the room? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Um, any opposed? So that's the, that piece. Okay. Next piece is a cemetery commissioner uh, proposed appointment. So we got somebody to, um, to write a letter of interest. Um, is John? Yes. She's not She's online, online. Is, and John is not either. Okay. Um, he was going to. Did he have any kind of? He just said she would make a great candidate. Um, mm -hmm. She's helping out here in the office a little bit, mm -hmm. helping the town clerk. She's also the assistant treasurer, and she loves like historical. Perfect. Yeah. Okay. So she's. Yeah, she'd like to be involved okay. a little more. Okay, so. so she's she would fill one of the seats, yeah. and those seats um, go for how many years? Um, well, yeah. she would have to get reelected, right? Yes, yeah, in March. In um, March. Okay. Yeah. So we're basically just electing her until the right. next election. I mean, appointing her until the next yes. election. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So this um, um, this letter reads: uh, It's by Lindley Spears. Um, dear Karen, I'd like to volunteer to serve as a cemetery commissioner. As a 20-year board member of the Putney Historical Society, Society, I am interested in the care and preservation of Putney's history, and our cemeteries represent an important part of that. Thank you for your consideration, Lindley Spears. Um, are there any comments on the board about this appointment? Uh, Peg, any comments? Just a, just a thank you. Okay. Eric? Uh, I, I see him, but he's there. Yeah, he's there. He's I'm taking silence for a second. Um, so, are there any comments online about this appointment? Um, if we appoint, if, when we appoint this person, I'm going to assume that we do shortly. We're still going to need one more. So, uh, if anybody's interested, please uh, reach out to uh, Karen um, or John, I guess, because he would know the um, process, uh, Mr. Fairman. Madam Chair, at town meeting, a number of people came forward to say they would like to serve as cemetery commissioners. I'm wondering whether the town has reached out to them after town meeting. They did. They sent letters, and yeah. we didn't get any response. So nice. we, we tried again. Mm -hmm. um, so um, are there any, any comments, other comments in the room? 
Okay, I don't think I have a motion yet. I move that we approve the appointment of Lindley Spears as a cemetery commissioner. Second. Second. It's been moved and seconded to appoint, uh, I'm sorry, I Lindley just lost Spears. it. Lindley Spears as a cemetery commissioner. Um, any other comments on the board? In the room? Online? Hearing none. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Okay. Um, next is uh, public participation review and comment. That's got you on it, Fletcher. Uh, I didn't have time to do a red line version of that, so. Okay, so we'll table that. Put it off till okay. next meeting, please. Do you want us to put it down um, under select board reports? Um, that would be. Sure. Okay. So we'll put it down there um, for the next meeting, and then it, you know when when you've got the time, um, <laughs> we can put it back up. Okay. Okay. Thank you. All right. Um, so moving on to select board unfinished uh, business, um, the Putney Fire Department reports. The first one is the town manager's update. Um, sorry, I just lost my place. I'm stalling the time right now. <laughs> Are you still hungry? I am starving right now. Um, hang on a minute. In my many different things here. <clears throat> Is this right? All right, so the last two weeks has been um, busy again. Uh, I feel a lot's been accomplished over the last two weeks. Um, so since May 1st, um, I've met with Peter Lynch, interim chief Harlow, and Evan Martin. It's a Monday night. Um, so we were looking at a combined plan to try to move forward, you know, with fire and, you know, having an EMS side. I know the select board has charged us with looking at fire and trying to reactivate the department. Um, but um, we've had several meetings with um, Peter Lynch and Chief Harlow and Evan Martin. Um, so it's also was stated, uh, Evan Martin let us know that Putney EMS should try to transition back to Putney by August of 2024. So there's some agreement. And um, I spoke with Jeanette actually today, and um, we're going to try to coordinate a meeting mm -hmm. with Drew Hazelton. And um, I'm going to try to get some more information. But the, the main focus right now is the fire department. Mm -hmm. the fire sector of the department. Gotcha. Um, so I just wanted to make that announcement. Um, so Brian and I also met with Peter on Monday, um, May 13th, to determine what our options, you know, for moving forward. Um, so unfortunately, what we were planning um, fell through, so we're going to regroup, but again, we're going to get the fire department up and running. We are, we know that EMS right now, our cutting EMS first responders are working under the license of rescue, and they can remain there until at least August, but we will sit through that as soon as we get the fire up and running. Mm -hmm. um, so again, a lot of progress was made. Um, I want to recognize and give credit to, there's a lot of people involved in this process right now. And um, the interim chief, Harlow, has done quite a bit of work in the last two weeks. And he's had support from a lot of different people, um, past chiefs, um, 
people that were on the movement. Um, we have a plan on paper. It's pretty much 90% complete at this time. Um, I do know that select board requested at least a two-day notice mm -hmm. before they would consider making a decision. So um, there's a couple other pieces that the interim chief and I will bring together and then try to hold a special meeting. Okay. Um, well, we go into some detail on that? Yeah, I would like. Okay. Um, uh, you're done with, for now? Pretty much, okay. yeah. Uh, go ahead. Okay. Um, yeah, last night we had a meeting. I don't know really what you went over, but last night we had a meeting. Uh, I would call it fairly successful. Um, we had a good, good group of people there, um, including some of the people that resigned, um, came back. You know, I think maybe the a little bit of time we've had has possibly made people, you know, cool down a little bit. Mm -hmm. So that was good. Um, 13 applications I have here to to um, submit. Um, I th think I have uh, out of out of that 13, um, four of those are at a minimum of firefighter one certified. Um, I have another two, three, five, six, another six, and and one of them uh, was somebody that had walked away, who is firefighter one certified. He's indicated to me that he's probably more interested in just driving and pumping, but I mean it, it, that doesn't matter. I mean he's firefighter one certified. He can guide and and. We're not gonna turn. We're not gonna turn that away for sure. Um, as Karen, I guess said, we're we're not ready to go yet. Um, we got uh, six months of a training schedule, and um, I want to have a, another officers meeting this hopefully this weekend, and we could just to just to review that and make sure we're all on the same page, and that's the direction we want to go just to um, make sure we're covering all of our basics mm -hmm. so we're you know uh, the other thing that we have to do is um, before before we get things going is um, some of that some of those 13 are not are not going to be responding to calls that's so that's because that. they're not certified yet well no not that just because they're they're just uh, they just want to be around to help you know they're okay. not they're not necessarily going to be firefighters but okay. they're people that have been around in the past they have a lot of experience they have a lot of good you know guiding ability they're willing yes. to uh, take some responsibilities and a role to take some stuff off uh, my plate slash the officer's plate, which is, you know, that's what we're looking for. Anybody that wants to do anything, we can give them a roll. That's, you know, perfect. So, um, but a good share of those people are, um, they're in town. A lot of them are self-employed, which is, you know, that's kind of key because they can. That would be the best, right? Yeah. I mean, they can kind of set their own schedule, yeah. you know. It's, it's a little easier than, you know, if you work in a factories however whatever it's a little bit easier to get away nine to five is a little bit harder to go it is with the, with um, sure yeah so I think we're heading in a in a good direction and um, uh, if we can get get those people up to speed comfortable with the trucks uh, maybe get a few trainings under their belt um, some of those people a, a lot of the people that are coming are, are interested in driving and pumping a lot of those people have already have some experience in that so what that's going to do is it's going to shorten up the time where it makes them productive because we're not trying to teach them to fight fire what we're doing is we're taking them teaching them to pump which is going to take somebody that is running the pump and they can fight the fire so it's going to put the people that are trained already in a better position. You know, the last fire we had, every single 
piece of apparatus we had was being run by somebody that was firefighter one certified. Okay. So they're they're not they're not. But you don't need that to run the truck. Is what well, saying. no, you don't. No. So I mean, technically, you don't need it to fight fire, but right, it's, right, but I mean, right, it's, right. Yeah. So that I mean, that's what we're looking for. We're looking for uh, people that can fight fire because mm -hmm. that's what we need. So. If we can take those people that just want to pump and put them into the place of the people that are currently taking that responsibility and put those people to work in a in a different way, I mean that's the quickest way to to make this you know go to a hundred percent. So okay. um, feeling good. I've, We're I've getting been, there. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I would I would say you know I would hope for sometime next week we would be we would be able to potentially. You know, I would be comfortable with 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 something to, and get things rolling. Um, you know, I've been in contact with chiefs in the area. They're all still willing to provide whatever as far as, you know, if we need to still call some mutual aid uh, right off the bat, just until we get our feet under us, that, that's an option. Um, they're, they're, they're all happy with the progress they're seeing so um, I, I think I think showing them that uh, we're going in a positive direction is you know making them feel a lot more comfortable that's about good. it too yeah, so that's definitely good. yeah yeah um, on the EMS side of things um, last night's meeting was uh, pretty much strictly fire um, I did acknowledge the EMS side of things um, it's important it's it's probably 65 to 70 percent of our calls. Right. Um, it, it's covered right now. You know we're in a pretty good place with what we have going. So, um, but as soon as we get fire up, that's going to be the next uh, the next mm -hmm. thing to tackle. And um, I've been working with uh, well, we worked with Evan there a fair amount. He's 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 gonna you know sort of step away for now. Mm -hmm. He's he's not feeling super comfortable, but um, uh, I've been talking to Billy and, and trying to see if I could get Billy into Billy Strauss into that role. Okay. I feel like Billy's a really good asset. I, I trust Billy. Um, he's got a pretty level head and he so I'm I'm hoping that I'm hoping that we can we can make something work and Get things moving forward in that okay. aspect too. Okay. All right. So it sounds like some work's going to happen over the weekend as well too. So, yeah. um, Sarah. I just wanted to report the number of calls since April third. Okay. So Dunnerston reported eleven calls. Uh, not all fire. They could be motor vehicle. Westminster had eight. Brattleboro reported zero, and Rescue thirty-seven. Okay. So those are the numbers since April 3rd. Okay. Do we know where those went to? Like, no. Okay. No. Um, I mean, I can get... I don't know. I mean... I don't think we need them right now. I know Landmark is a big user of the... That'll be a, a dip down the line. We'll, we'll figure that okay. out. Especially yeah. with rescue. Yeah. Because... I'm not trying to pick on Landmark, but schools right. in general uh, are the ones that... Yeah. may trigger yeah. some issues. I don't think we, we haven't had a lot of Not wood. <laughs> <laughs> Landmark has been fairly, you know, the schools okay. have been fairly quiet. I yeah. think it's just been, you know, <coughs> here, just there, here, there, and stuff. everywhere. Yeah. There's okay. nothing that's, so. Okay. All right. Um, Mr. Farmer? Madam Chair, I have a couple of questions. First, uh, regarding the calls that other departments have, uh, uh, Brown and Putney. Are Putney taxpayers paying extra for this? That's a good, uh, how does mutual aid work? It's a mutual agreement between the towns. Mm -hmm. And we don't pay for it? It's just a, It's just out of the kindness of their hearts? Okay. Yeah. Well, I think it's reciprocal. There must be something. Department. Okay. Yeah. yeah. All right. So well, theoretically it's reciprocal, right? But we're not participating right, right now. Right. Nobody tracks it. I mean, Madam Chair, the reason I ask that question is because at the moment Putney is not able to reciprocate in mutual aid, so I was curious if the, if, if the system changed because of that. So far, I guess they've been 
amenable to yes. just okay. being uh, part of it. <laughs> I, I do have another question, but first I have to uh, clarify something. Uh, the, the, the previous speaker spoke of having received 13 applications, and I'm wondering, applications for what? Um, Brian, do you want to answer that question? To join the fire department. Okay. Now, this is because they resigned? No, no. This is a combination of uh, just putting it out there to um, anybody that wants to join, and I'll say it to everybody that's listening, anybody that wants to come down and contribute in whatever way, come put an application in. You know, we're, we're willing to, you know, have anybody that wants to come down and join. So it's, it's a combination of some people that have been there in the past, but maybe further in the past, like, mm -hmm. you know, 10 years ago, or, um, and then some that have recently left, and then just the, the majority of them on that list are just people that are, are brand new that have just been recruited to, mm -hmm. to come down, and they want to come down and help. So, Madam Chair, just to clarify my understanding of what the gentleman said, am I correct that uh, these people were not on the Putney Fire Department uh, recently? They're either new applicants or they used to be on the department. In other words, they are new blood for the department? It sounds like that's where we're Am I correct, sir? Yeah, uh, yeah the, the majority of them. There, there is mm -hmm. some that uh, were, were here recently, mm -hmm. you know, two or three. Thank you. Are there um, comments online that's um, Morgan? Morgan. Hey, um, thank you guys for doing all this work. It's wonderful. Um, I just want to um, say uh, something about EMS. I'm just, I'm a little nervous that August is closer than we realize. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm wondering, I'm hearing like conversation like, oh, we'll figure out fire and then we can do EMS. And I wonder if there's any possibility, if there's enough resource and time to do those concurrently. And then my other comment would just be, I think we've been acting as though fire and EMS are separate, which is which makes sense for logistic and like organizational. But I think in reality, um, <coughs> been a cohesive group in the past, right? So I wonder if it would be I, I would recommend uh, kindly and respectfully that you start incorporating the EMS people who are responding in town right now into these conversations with rebuilding the fire department. Um, because I, I want there to be a team again. And I think, um, you know, my husband is, is spending a lot of nights away out in the world trying to help people. And I, I would like him to, to be involved in these conversations. I think that would be good for the town. Okay. Um, I think the August uh, time frame was an initial time frame. So, um, and you haven't had a chance to talk to Drew yet, right? Jeanette is here. I don't know. Yeah. So I'm having breakfast with Drew tomorrow morning okay. to talk about a number of things, including, yeah. and then setting up a meeting with Karen okay. to, to um, have an initial conversation okay. about the the timing and the structure going forward. Structure. structure yeah. And, okay. Yeah. Um, and I also pretty clear, like, I'm sorry that you guys are like, look at all this work I did. And I'm like, hey, can you do some more? Like, I do appreciate your support. <laughs> can I just say one thing to that? Go ahead, yeah. Yeah, so um, I said that last last night's meeting was, was for for fire, but the, the talks that we've been having have, have, have been about EMS. It's just last night's meeting specifically was about fire. Mm -hmm. So it wasn't, it's not that, it's not a thought, it's, it's out there, you know. It's 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 huge, you know. I, I you know I understand. It's like I said, it's seventy percent of the calls in this town. So right. it's yeah. It's not that it's being overlooked. It's just that you know it's it's, it's being covered pretty well right now, and and uh, trying to get this other ask you know this other part of it up so we can we can. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I prefer to not make it more complicated than it already is, yeah. and we do have a good structure with rescue right now. So, yeah. um, so I think we, I think you stay in the course is a good. That's my personal opinion. Um, are there oh, other right select here. board members? Um, Peg, do you have any comments? Um, Jess said I really look forward to getting a. A report um, with you know that outlines some of these things that you know that we're hearing, but I, we haven't seen it. 
presented in a way yet that really pulls the information together and allows us to really look at it. So I'm very much looking forward to that. Um, thank, and thank you for the work you've done thus far to get us there. Um, and the only other thing is if we want uh, to, I heard Brian say he, he might be ready next week. Um, I'm a little concerned about timing. I am not going to, I'm going to be unavailable for a meeting next week from Tuesday to Friday. So um, I just don't know if we want to be thinking ahead and planning and scheduling something that we could then cancel if we're, if the, if we're not ready yet. Um, but I think it might be good to get things um, scheduled out. Can you have a plan to us by Saturday? No. Yeah, I was. Yeah. I, th I mean, it's I mean, not the end of the world. Are you thinking yeah. Sunday afternoon? So, yeah, I'm going to be up north for two days. Right, I forgot. So, yeah. I, there's, I'm willing to work with Brian on Saturday mm -hmm. or Sunday. It's not Mother's Day on Sunday. So, I will work with Brian on <laughs> Sunday. No holidays. Okay. Um, um, but it doesn't I, I, give you <laughs> enough time if you want two days. Yeah, I, for me, two days that are, are weekends are hard, you know, that's not really two days for me to be able to um, digest and go out and get some feedback from other people. And um, so I, w I would propose maybe setting up, I don't know, either at the end of the week without me or at the beginning of the following week um, if if we're if we're aiming towards that time anyways so um okay so peg if you were able to review the plan and you had questions could you send your questions to us and then we can answer them i already did that <laughs> yes Maybe. you did but no i meant once you get the plan and then you have further questions if you can't make a meeting later in the week would you can we answer yeah. your questions before the meeting um yes but i guess i really would want my questions to be going to the select board as well you know like i don't want them you know uh, um no you can send yeah. them to eileen you I can mean. send them to me and i could read them out or something to that effect yeah okay um yeah i I um, we are getting into summer uh, vacations for all of us. We've got two members uh, on the board that are on vacation right now, and they've been kind enough to zoom in. Um, but we but we are we are just going to start running into scheduling issues. Um, so I mean, Technically, if we have three of us, we have a quorum and we can make a decision. It's not ideal. I'd rather have all five of us here. Um, but, you know, it, it, if we have a, if it's a good solid plan and we're, you know, we're good with it, then we can, we can go that way. Um, but uh, what did you say your schedule was until Thursday? Yeah, okay. Wednesday till Friday, I am out. I'm I cannot meet Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, or Friday. Okay. Yeah. And Eric, what's your schedule? I'll be free all next week. I'm back. You're back next week. Okay. Um, let's. I would prefer to just play it by ear. Um, mm -hmm. I, because I, I, I don't know. I can't. Did you want to have some? To, um, add, um, everybody else is free next week. I think I'm free next week. Um, so, go ahead, Ken. Yeah, so next week is probably, it may be better, only because the 27th is a holiday. So the office will be closed, and then you're looking at the 29th for your next Which is meeting, next week. You know? So that's like two <laughs> weeks away. The two um, weeks go by fast, man. Um, all right, well. Let, let's just do the best we can, schedule-wise. Right. We'll, we'll do the best we can. All right. Um, as so, long, we're making progress. 
we'll just we'll just keep trying to make pro progress. Yeah. Okay. All right. All right. Thank you. Okay. Um, are there other comments in the room? Are there comments online? Okay. Um, moving forward to the Putney Fire Department Advisory Committee that has your name on it, Peg. Um. Yeah. Well, we've got lots of interest. Um, how do we want to um, go about making um, decisions about this? Is this something that we want to do um, in executive session, um, or is this something we want to do in open session? Um, well, we don't. We actually don't even have the letters in our packet here. Um, I. Um, I feel like that because there are some members who are either former or possibly um, future employees of the fire department that we probably ought to do in an executive session. Okay. I agree with that. Yeah. Um, do we want to do that tonight? I, I would love to do it tonight. I would love to get this committee s stood up. Okay. Um, all right, so then I guess we're gonna uh, push that down to executive session. Um, Mr. Fairman. Uh, Chair, uh, as per the Vermont Open Meeting Law 1 BSA section 313, what would be the reason that you choose from that list for having this executive session? Um, that would be the appointment or appointment or evaluation of a public office officer or employee. So that's uh, 313A3. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Um, I do believe that the letters are in the packet online. They're just not in this packet, right? Um, I have them in this folder, and I was going to make copies okay. for your... All right. Second session. Okay. All right. So uh, we're going to move that down. Uh, the next piece is um, the something that I scrolled out that I can't read anymore. It says role of the fire department, the firefighters association, which is good. That's me. Um, well, as the board knows, because I circulated a copy of some minutes. Um, I've been burrowing into the, continuing to burrow into the history of uh, the department and its unusual uh, relationship to the Firefighters Association, which Bill McCarty in 1985 noted that he couldn't find any other example of a similar structure. Um, I found minutes of a select board meeting from October 16, 1985, where Chair Peter Shumlin addressed the unusual structure of the fire department's budgets, that in fact the department operates two budgets, money appropriated by the town and money raised by the members of the department. Um, and in the almost 40 years since that sort of problematic structure has never been resolved. Um, an, an issue about it recently came to light when a check was delivered to a wrong address and that the recipient turned it into the town hall because it was addressed to the Putney Volunteer Fire Department. Um, and it came from a foundation, a family foundation that coincidentally was run by a former client of mine. So I called him up and I asked him what the money was for. Um, and, I, and also I went back and did research um, and discovered seven prior years of checks made out the same way that had never turned up in the town's receipts. Um, the, apparently because the Firefighters Association and the fire department used the same post office box. Uh, the Firefighters Association has been deciding which checks to turn over to the town and which checks to put into their account. Um, this is entirely inappropriate. Um, there's, there's my research, not counting the current check, there's at least $7,000 from that one foundation that 
I talked to my client. He didn't. He didn't indicate that they was to go to the association. He said it was to go to the department. So seven thousand dollars that should have gone into the department's budget has gone missing. Um, I think we're at a point where I well two things. I'd like to ask that the PO box keys all be turned over to the town manager because they ought to be being checked by a town employee and they ought to be kept in this office. Um, I, I also believe that that situation is part of the reason that the Triton report asked for, uh, recommended a forensic audit. Um, it's not so much that you're looking for somebody to prosecute, it's that we just don't know where the money's been going. So, you know, it, the board hasn't gone the last step of approving a forensic audit, but I'd also call on the Firefighters Association to open its books, which has not happened yet and has been resisted. I think we're entitled to look at those accounts to see what money came in, where it came from. It's not entirely clear to me that all the money that the Firefighters Association has taken possession of is money that they're entitled to have. So, um, at the risk of creating yet another firestorm, I call on the Firefighters Association to open their books. That's my pitch. Okay. Anybody have any other support? Have any comments? Okay, Eric. No. Okay. Um, comments online, and Morgan. Is this where we want to put our resources and our time and our effort right now? We don't have a functional fire department. We don't have good EMS for people that are medically vulnerable in our community, and you want to focus on the budget of the Firefighters Association. I want everyone to really consider if this is a priority for our community right now, or if this is some strange um, personal vendetta or what's going on. I'm gonna stop talking now, thank you. Could, thank could you. I respond um, to that? Go ahead. Um, I have no vendetta. I'm a select board member, and I think one of the most important jobs of a select board member is to protect the resources and assets of the town. This also isn't us looking at a budget, it's looking at where the money went. That's not a budget issue. And yes, I do think it's important, and I do think it's, you know, the vendetta word that gets thrown around. Tell me what my vendetta is. What I'm concerned about is my role as a select board member and my obligation to the town to ensure that the town's assets and resources are appropriately accounted for, which I can't do right now, and yes, I think it's worth pursuing. Okay, I'm okay. sorry. Wait, I, hold on, hang on, hold on, please. I have comments in the room. I'll come back to you in a second. Uh, Mr. Ferman? Madam Chair, to clarify what the uh, select person, uh, Proctor, has told us, I would ask, uh, uh, what was the name of the payee on the checks, the person, to, uh, the person or organization to, to, to uh, whom they were payable? Well, as I said previously, the Putney Volunteer Fire Department. Okay, is there such an organization? I don't know. Uh, somebody yeah. must have cashed them, so the bank accepted it, right? Um, That's a good question. So, yeah, um, so, don't touch them, <laughs> don't touch, <laughs> um, so, um, I have, uh, Casey, uh, wait, I have Casey, I have Kira, and then I have, um, uh, Morgan again. Yes, hi, it sounds like, um, maybe it would be helpful for the people listening for the select board to, um, explain their understanding of exactly what the association is. And then I also have a question about this former client. Did that client understand the difference between the association and the department? Thanks. Okay, thank you. Um, I have a clearer understanding about the difference between those two than I did, say, 
three months ago. Um, I would say that the lines do seem to be blurred and um, my personal recommendation is that we sit down at some point and craft a memora memorandum of understanding with the fire, uh, Firefighters Association to clarify those lines. Um, so, uh, so that's where I'm at um, as far as the Firefighters Association is. is uh, I, I tend to agree that while it is an issue, um, I don't think we want to delve into it right now. Um, yeah, I kind of want to echo kind of what you were saying and what Morgan was saying, which is I think we should be focusing our energy towards standing up a fire department and getting EMS going rather than a financial audit at this time. Um, I like what you said initially, which is doing a memorandum rather than the financial audit at this time. Okay. Um, who did I say? Akira? Hi, thank you. I, I just wanted to say I feel like it's all related and we can't just focus on one aspect and not another or I'm afraid we're going to just end up in the same situation all over again. Okay. So I appreciate everything Fletcher is bringing up. It gives me good background information and I feel like it um, helps people be heard. I feel like there's a reason why so many people quit the fire department. Um, I feel like the root issues aren't being resolved and we need to get to the root issue or we're not really going to be making forward progress. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Morgan, you had your hand up previously. Do you still, would you still like to talk? Um, I think when I sat up Fletcher, upset Fletcher and I apologize for suggesting that there was a vendetta. I do, do just want to reiterate, we are a community with limited resources and this does not feel like the priority right now. Okay, thank you. Uh, Elizabeth Warner, I'm sorry. Actually, Elizabeth, before you go, I'm going to the, uh, the room and then I'll come back to you. Uh, Jeanette? So I think that um, in 1985, the minutes that you've talked about with uh, when Peter suggested, I was on the select board at the time, and I, I'm pretty sure I was, and the issue was um, the hose fund is what it was called at the time, and what happened is that the firefighters would be paid a certain amount for going to a call, but they didn't actually take that money, they turned it back into the hose fund, and primarily to buy new homes, but or whatever else was needed. <coughs> That became an issue, and that's, I believe, when the, it actually became a department. And I think there never was the real understanding. And I, and I may, may be wrong about this, and don't hit me if I am, but, um, and I think this is worth looking at, but I think it's worth looking at once we get the fire department set back up. And I always think of this as, um, the women's auxiliary. Unfortunately, what happened is that most of the members of the women's auxiliary are firefighters. So it, it got really confused and kind of um, mushed together. And I, I think that we should, we need to work it out. We need to straighten it up. I, I would resist thinking about a forensic audit. I don't know if you know, a forensic audit is done when you're looking for, um, and I had, the, had it written down last time I was here, but it's when you're looking for um, the kind of evidence that would stand up in court, that's when you use it, or if you're looking for um, malfeasance somehow. It is, and it, there, there's only, as I understand it, there's only one firm in Vermont that does forensic audits, because you have to be trained both as an auditor and in forensics. And they are in Burlington. As far as I can tell, they're the only ones that do it, and they're very expensive. So I would suggest that when we get to the department set back up, that we do look at this, and that we have some kind of a memo of understanding, and that we try and figure out what happened in the past, but that we don't have to hire um, forensic auditors to do it. That's okay. Thank you. Um, I'm going to put you on. Uh, 
the bottom of my list. Um, so I have Elizabeth Warner, and then I have Daniel, and then I have Mr. Farron. Hi, um, I wanted to follow up on Kira's statement, and as a uh, longtime resident of me and a village resident who receives a discount on my insurance for my uh, closing to the fire department, I have great concerns that we address every aspect of why our fire department failed, and that we clean it up and be reboot with all of our ducks in a row and the select board has a fiduciary duty to the town to the taxpayer in every economic position. Big things in the red or disregarding something that has created havoc in our department, which is so valuable and so appreciated and so needed, uh, seems like uh, just another superficial bandit. So let's do it right and uh, get the fire department rebooted with all of its ducks in a row, nice and clean lines, and going forward, um, have the accounting in order. And I was at all those at AP Tryon, and the indications were that every single part of that building, every pencil on our desk was owned by the town, and there was literally no record of any. So why not get it cleaned up properly and reboot with all things fresh and good? Okay, thank you. Uh, Daniel? Hi. Um, a couple thoughts. Uh, first, a, a couple of folks have spoken to um, the idea that uh, somehow addressing this concern would help address reasons why people left the fire department. And I would just say there's a pretty clearly written letter from the folks that resigned recently that actually indicated that exactly this type of situation um, was a contributing factor to their decision to leave. And what I mean by that is uh, a great way to approach this might have been to contact the treasurer uh, or any of the officers of the Firefighters Association uh, and express that this was a concern that, want, that you wanted to discuss at a select board meeting and allow those people time to come with the appropriate data to share to help sort this out. That might have been uh, an approach of sort of teamwork, of collaboration, of trying to solve this problem together. Uh, blindsiding those people by just throwing this out at a meeting without any warning feels contrary to that collaborative approach that we're looking for of having an effective way of the association and the membership of the department and the town all working together. And that's exactly why people left the department. So this feels really counterproductive to that hope of getting the department up and running smoothly again. Okay, thank you. Um, I have Peg um, wants to make a comment, and then I will move it um, to uh, Mr. Fairman. Okay, I just wanted to say as a select board member that um, the issues that have come up in the AP Triton report and since then are of high priority for me. I am very committed to unpacking and solving a number, a lot of the underlying things that have happened in the fire department. I care deeply about that and not, I am committed to that. Um, and I am aware that we have a short term issue and we have what I'm gonna call a medium term issue. Like the whole idea of standing up this committee the task force is to be able to put the energy to solve, to look at some of the medium term issues and to do a strategic plan where we can look at what are the things that Triton pointed out to us, what are our priorities, how are we gonna approach them. I just think taking this, making, it's not, there's no attempt to hide, to cover up, um, it is, an attempt to be strategic about how we're dealing with these issues. Um, so we have that medium term issue of trying to get the department pulled together in a way that's sustainable. And in the meantime, we have a short term crisis that we're trying to resolve. And that's what Karen and Brian are working so hard to try to figure out is how to solve the problem in the short term. I I just want to reassure people that that 
the the issues will not be dropped. If they're not dealt with this week or this month, that doesn't mean that they're not going to show up on that strategic plan as we go forward. It's just a matter of prioritizing and, and getting to things in a in a timely fashion. That makes sense. Okay. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Farman? Madam Chair, I want to say that I, I, I fully respect what Senator White and Attorney Proctor have said. Uh, a bit of additional information first. We were wondering earlier about the Putney Volunteer Fire Department. I'm looking at the Vermont Secretary of State's Corporations database, which also applies to domestic nonprofit corporations, which are we, what we think of as 501c3s. Uh, the Putney Volunteer Fire Department Incorporated uh, uh, was there, but it was dissolved in, in 2001. The, the general, the registered agent was Lawrence Hyde. Putney Volunteer Firefighters Association, however, is active. The registered agent is uh, Tom Goddard. Now, uh, concerning the question of forensic audits, I agree with Senator White that the implication there is that there has been something done that should not have been done that could result in prosecution. And we, in fact, have no evidence of this yet. So I suggest that uh, we find out not just uh, uh, who cashed the checks, but uh, what evidence there is of how the money was spent. Because it may very well be that the money was spent for legitimate purposes, in which case there, no, no prosecution would be possible. And it could be just a matter, as it often is, uh, uh, among volunteers, especially in rural Vermont, where we depend on volunteers to make Vermont work, the people just said, hey, we need to buy this, let's buy it. And it was a legitimate expense for the fire department. So ultimately, uh, we might quibble with, 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 you know, with the method, as an auditor might say, but actually nothing wrong was done. So I think I shall pursue this, uh, this point in the future, that we simply say, okay, what was the money spent on? It was legitimate. Great. You know, we don't need a forensic audit, and as Senator White points out, these are elite auditors, and uh, they know it, and uh, they make sure you know it by charging you a lot more than usual auditors. Thank you. <laughs> okay, thank you. Here, here. Um, I have another comment online. Um, wait, uh, Pedro, is your hand still up? Okay. Uh, Lynn? Uh, Lynn? Can they answer last? Hey. Oh, could you, say, could, you, uh, could you say your full name before you speak? This is actually Billy Strauss. Oh, hi, Billy. Hi. Um, I, I, I'm going to respond to a piece of what it has been said, because I think too many meetings, things have been thrown out sort of willy-nilly, and the resulting spin-out um, takes an enormous amount of time and energy for everybody. Um, Karen and I worked closely together. Um, I am the treasurer of the Putney Volunteer Firefighters Association, for folks who don't know that. Karen and I worked closely together at the beginning of the Triton uh, um, assessment process um, because Rich, who was the lead consultant there, um, asked for information about the association. Mm -hmm. Everything was provided. Um, probably like four ways to Sunday, if I recall. Karen can correct me if I'm wrong, because we provided some information, and then they wanted it sort of parsed differently, so we did that. In addition, um, and Howard, and, well, I guess I'm not allowed to respond directly, but I will just say to the room, there has been at least one, if not multiple occasions of a very detailed inventory provided to the town, to town hall, to the select board, to the town manager, articulating each and every expense that the association paid for going back um, well before my time, even possibly back beyond 1985 when Peter Shumlin was doing whatever he was doing 40 some odd years ago. So all of which is to say, I would suggest the select board do its due diligence. It review with its town manager um, what information is already on hand. It review the uh, detailed ledgers that have been provided already vis-a-vis um, -vis the association's expenditures on behalf of the town. And then 
if there are legitimate questions that need to be addressed, I'm happy to answer them. Or if we need to go back before my time, um, there are people like Tom Goddard and Brad King and Mark Fellows and Eric McGowan who predate me, and they were all there. So um, the information is on hand, it's there, we're an open book, we're a 501c3, all you need to do is ask. So I just wanted to say that in hopes it puts some of the spinning to rest. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Um, great, George. George, it's close. Um, a couple of questions. The fire department is town organization, correct? The, the fire, fire department, department itself, itself yes. yes. The Fire Department Association is not a town entity, correctly? That is totally right. separate. It's a 501c3. The town has no right to request their books for anything. Right, this is true. So I, I get your point, Fletcher, that you need to know where that check went that was addressed to the fire department, but you have no right to request the books of the Fire Department Association. I, I need to okay. know what happened to the previous seven checks as well. Well, Bill, Bill so, seemed to have some answers. Yeah, so, yeah, so it sounds, so, um, and I, I also take Dan, uh, Dan, Dan, Daniel's point um, that you know, this this was added to the agenda late, um, and that it's not necessarily um, constructive to um, to have this discussion right now, especially since we don't appear to have talked to the treasurer of the fire association before we went live today. Um, and um, you know, as a select board member, I just want to say that's not the way that I would have gone about it. Um, I'm, I am, um, I, I fully trust everybody. I do. I, I also take Mr. Fairman's point that volunteers are volunteers, and organizations 501c3s are run by you know shoestring and glue. Um, so I, you know, I, maybe something got cashed in the wrong thing. I do agree that you know maybe the the mailboxes should be separated in the future if people are going to muddy the waters by um, putting uh, uh, addressing checks to the wrong people. I think that's probably a good uh, strategy going forward. Um, but I do not feel that a forensic audit is uh, warranted at this time. And I also agree with Peg that I, I'm also fully committed to a lot of the recommendations in the AP Triton report. That is not where we are right now. We're trying to get the fire service back up. Um, uh, I have, um, I'm sorry, Russ Ellis, and then um, Mr. Graham again. I was myself and town manager Jim Bowen. There's when we separated and wanted to separate things more to have definite line. Mm -hmm. So we made the by the Firemen's Association as a 501c3. Mm -hmm. And that separated actual, separated the complete departments into the Putney Town Fire Department and the Putney Firemen's Association. Mm -hmm. And it's continued on from there. I like you. We went to 501c3 so we could when we want some donations for a, a pager, or not a pager, but a thermal imager. It was a fairly expensive item, over $20,000. Mm -hmm. And we went out to the town to accumulate that money. So we got the 501c3 so we could give our, mm -hmm. all these donations a tax write-off, which they did. And that's basically where it started. And it's progressed through the years. And those checks, I'm not sure where they went, but it may have been for, from no idea. Yeah, that's no, the start of it. Jim Um And I think that, that line um, is not quite clear enough. I agree. <laughs> now, I mean, I'm, I'm glad that, you know, that. I'm glad that was the original intent, but obviously we're a little bit, we're still a little bit confused yep. about where that line ends. Um, so again, going forward, I think we, we want to we want to definitely make that line very clear. Um, it's not what we're doing right now, uh, Jeanette. 
So I, this may be somewhat similar. I work for Brattleboro Housing Partnerships. They're a quasi-federal mm -hmm. um, municipal agency. So they cannot apply for and receive certain grants that are designed only for 501c3s. So HUD encouraged the public housing authorities to create a 501c3. So we have Broward Housing Opportunities Inc., which is designed, which is set up only to serve yeah. the residents of Broward Housing Partnerships, but it is its own 501c3. And there is a, and, and we have managed to figure out the relationship and how we're going to do it. But they have no staff, they have no nothing. The staff is all provided to them by Brattleboro Housing. So it, it, it's somewhat the same. Yeah. And um, I thought of that when Russ was talking about being able to give um, tax, tax deductions for yeah. the donation. That's a useful um, vehicle for that, too. Uh, Mr. Farman, I. Madam Chair, first I have a question which would be addressed to uh, Mr. Strauss as Chair of the Putney Volunteer Firefighters Association. He's the Treasurer. Treasurer. Right? Oh. Oh, so, sorry, Treasurer, yes. Uh, which is, uh, do you folks file uh, uh, your, your Form 990 as a detailed document or as a postcard? Um, Bill, Billy, do you have the answer to that question? I do indeed. This is Billy. We file a uh, postcard return as we have for the last, I don't know, probably five, seven years. Okay, so that's uh, under 50000 right? Yeah. Correct. Yeah. Madam Chair, that's why I asked the question, because really small 501c3s can just file a postcard. Mm -hmm. And uh, to, to, to address a, a, a matter that uh, Attorney Parker raised, if in fact they did file a, de a detailed Form 990, as larger 501c3s do, uh, there's a lot of detail there. But uh, alas, so we don't have that available. Right. Okay. Thank you. Uh, Casey, you have your hand up? Yes. Hi. Um, I guess I'd just like to put forth the idea that I don't think the average citizen in Putney who might be writing a check to support the fires association, they may not understand mm. the difference between the two, and hopefully this meeting has clarified that some, but I want the select board to consider that, that the average person is not going to know to write a check out to the Putney Volunteers Fire Association, mm -hmm. um, and they, I, I, I find it hard to believe that they're going to say, no, I meant that check to go to the town, not the Firefighters <laughs> Association, so please consider that. Okay, thank you. Uh, Peg, you have your hand up? Yeah, I do. I would just like to encourage us to move off of this topic. Mm -hmm. um, not that it isn't an important issue for us to deal with, um, but this is does not feel like the forum in which to deal with it. Okay. Um, I, and I encourage um, I encourage us to, to deal with it in a, in a different forum um, as we work on our strategic efforts to improve the uh, a lot of different things about the fire station and the fire department. Uh, this is definitely going to come up. It's like top on, on our list. We've visited it multiple times and it's not going to go away, but hashing this out here at the select board meeting is not the appropriate place to do. Okay, I agree with you. Can I just say one thing? Um, yeah, go ahead. Yeah. I just say that we could probably agree from now moving forward if there's a check that comes to the mailbox at the fire station that is not clearly the association, it will come to town hall. I mean that's a pretty simple yep, way fair. to way to deal with it for now. If, if yeah. it's not clear that it's the Putney Fire Department Association, then we will figure it out. Maybe it's as simple as calling the person and saying, Hey, who was this meant to? Can you write a check? to wherever you decide you want it to go. Kind of simple. <laughs> um, I, that's fair. And again, I, you know, eventually I'd like all of this written out so that we don't, you know, have to... Um, ten years down the Ten years road. down the right yeah. road. Yeah. <laughs> wonder yeah. when we actually said that in this meeting. Yeah. For, for 40 um, years. 40 years. <laughs> in the, yeah. Final um, minutes. Right. Yeah. Uh, um, so... I just um, want to build on the comment you just made. Uh, 
Chairman, um, and that's that recommendation 11 in the Triton report says, prepare and execute an agreement between the town and the fire department outlining each party's roles and responsibilities. Yeah. And I think that really goes to the heart of what AP Triton was saying, is there's confusion, lack of clarity, lack of policies, how purchasing and all of that is done, mm -hmm. uh, and calling for that. And I, I think that's the bigger picture. I just want to pull this whole thing up to that. And I think that is a real challenge uh, in setting up the fire department, even at this initial piece. And I'd say that I hope that the effort to set it up and move it forward provides some greater measure of clarity about procedures and policies and who handles what and how money flows. Right. Um, and I just say that to be constructive because we're at the moment of trying to set something up. And I think, I think it's wonderful to have people and training and then we also need these procedures and understandings, you know, um, so that we don't find ourselves, you know, back in this um, murky yep. situation. So that's my contribution to this. And, and hopefully that can be, at least some version of that mm -hmm. can be done sooner than later. Just, it can be built out further, but what are the essential pieces that are needed in the near term? Okay. I, I agree with that. Okay, um, I'd like to move off of this topic as well, unless there's other... Um, Casey, you still have your hand up? Is that...? No, sorry, all set. Okay, um, so if there's no other comments in the room, no other comments online, any other comments on the select board? Just one footnote. Uh, I didn't ask for a forensic audit. All I did was acknowledge that the board wasn't in favor of one at this point. Okay. I did point out what the Trader report says, but I didn't ask for a forensic audit. What I asked instead was to see what the association's finances are, and apparently Billy's willing to provide that, and that's all I was asking for. Okay. Can we move on? All right, moving on to select board reports, uh, draft sidewalk policy, Peg? Oh, no. Um, okay, one second. Lynn, your hands up. I mean, Billy, Billy. here. <laughs> I'm sorry, but I just have to respond to this, Fletcher. The information has been provided. I don't know how much more clearly or how many times I need to say that. If there is additional information, I'm happy to provide that. But for you to say what you said, implying that we haven't provided the information, is totally disingenuous. So I would ask you respectfully to knock it off. I would uh, ask. Wait, hold on. That, I would ask that you not call me disingenuous, which oh, is a little inflammatory. I would say I would acknowledge I'm uninformed about the information now, and I will be happy to sit down with the town manager and find out what is there and get back to you with any further questions. Okay. May I respond? Um, if, it's very quick. if it's constructive, Billy, I'd really like to move off of this it's subject. It's going to be very quick. I okay. just want to, language matters, and I want to be clear that I already had said that the information has been provided, and it's just difficult in a situation like this to then be told or have a statement made that implies the information has yet to be provided. And I just, I just want to be clear about that. The information is in the hands of the town manager. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Thank you. All right. Can can we move off of this subject, Mr. Fairman? Yes, maybe. Madam Chair, just to clarify, did the town manager not just acknowledge that uh, Mr. Strauss has provided the information? Um, he did when we were going through the AP Triton process. Thank so you. I so, do have the information in the drop box. Thank you. This question was for the record. Okay, thank you. All right. I, okay, so I really would like to move on, unless there's any constructive comments. Um, all right. Peg, uh, Peg side, uh, draft sidewalk policy? I have nothing tonight. Okay. Um, cannabis control? Uh, I'm meeting with JJ and Ray, 
Uh, yeah, Rachel, on the 20th. So. Okay. Next week. Okay, sounds good. Um, select board operating princi principles. Um, I'm guessing we're bundling those with the uh, <coughs> public participation. Um, I believe that there's two separate documents. One's procedures and the other one's uh, principles. But, okay, um, well, I'd like to put that you off. Just put that off. Okay, all right. Um, okay, so we are going to go into executive session, but before we do that, our next regularly scheduled meeting is going to be on May 29th, 2024 at 530 here in the town hall and on Zoom. Um, we are hoping that we might have a special meeting in the near future, possibly next week. Um, the meetings are 24, 48, 24. 24. 24 hours in advance, um, so they uh, they will be warned on our town website um, and around town um, and on social media. I believe we started doing that, so um, hopefully everybody has those channels um, uh, to 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 be notified when the meeting is. Um, and that's. That so, can I hear a motion to go into executive session under Title One VSA 313A3, the appointment or employment or evaluation of a public officer or employee, provided that the public shall make a final decision to hire or appoint a public official or employee in an open meeting and shall explain the reasons for its final decision during the open meeting. Um, I turn in. And we are hopefully making a decision. Are we inviting anybody else? Um, well, we're going to make sure we have Peg and Eric. Right, but they're already invited. Yeah. Okay. Gotcha. <laughs> all right. Um, so moved. Second. All right. So it's been moved and seconded, seconded to go into executive session under Title I VSA 313A3. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Aye. 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 All right. Thank you, everyone. Okay, we are coming out of executive session at 7.29, um, and can I hear a motion to appoint the following people to the Putney Fire Department Advisory Committee? Um, if that would be Brad King, Daniel Garcia Gal Galili, Peg Alden as the select board uh, liaison, Billy Strauss, Jeanette White, Leonard uh, Howard, um, and Ruby McAdoo. So moved. Is there a second? Second. Okay, it's been moved and seconded to appoint the following people to the Putney Fire Department Advisory Committee. That's Brad King, Daniel Garcia Galili, uh, Peg Alden as the select board liaison, Billy Strauss, Jeanette White, Leonard Howard, and Ruby McAdoo. Friendly amendment. Yeah. I think we ask, we should add Brian and Karen too. Oh, at, um, okay. Yeah. And Brian as the Brian Harlow as the interim uh, fire chief, and Karen Astley as the town manager as non-voting members. Yeah. Okay. Uh, is it um, that was a friendly amendment? Who was the mover? You I was the mover. Okay. You're good with that. Yes. Okay. All right. Um, all in favor. Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Aye. Okay. okay. All right. Um, can I hear a motion to adjourn? So moved. I'll make a motion to adjourn. Okay. Second. <laughs> All right. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. Let's do it. Thank you, okay. everyone.